Selsi, spoken easy language for social inclusion. Uh, so thank you uh, for joining us today. And uh, a special thanks in the beginning to Esther and Sara and Lexi Bundet for organizing everything. And of course, thank you to Paul Gula for having us here on this lovely day. They say it will rain in the afternoon, but let's see. Uh, mm -hmm. Tatiana, hi also to everyone on Zoom. And I'm as Zoom. this lovely Celsi project. And I will just briefly and uh, hopefully uh, in an easy way explain what our project is. Clara, I think you have said. We are now at the final stage of our Okay, it works, yes. Um, and first off, I would like to mention uh, our lovely partners, their representatives are also with us here today in Malmo. Um, I come from South Lisa, we are a, 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 an NGO from Slovenia. Then we have another NGO, which is called Ikeshets, and they are from Lithuania. We already... Um, yeah. Yeah, in the top of the bottom. Another okay. From Bavia, we have representatives here. And here goes an honorable mention also to the University of Trieste, which was also a part of the project and is continuing to be. We have Vilnius for University with us in the project. Viglas Valodas Agentura from Latvia and Radio Televizia Slovenia, which is a broadcaster from Slovenia. And we are the team that has been working with a huge support from our advisory group and from our cooperation groups in uh, different countries, and also from all the uh, professionals and end users and other stakeholders that are interested in the project. Before okay. So what is CELSI? Spe CELSI stands for Spoken Easy Language for Social Inclusion. And what are we trying to do? We have two pictures here. We have uh, two, uh, three lovely gentlemen and uh, one lovely lady. And uh, I try to illustrate how uh, how uncomfortable can it be uh, when we do not understand each other well? This is uh, illustrated in the red picture. Uh, sometimes we all find ourselves in situations where we try to communicate and it's sort of not going well and sometimes we just nod or uh, whatever we do in these kind of situations. And then we have uh, situations where the communication goes smoothly. What can we do about this? How can we be successful in our communication? The project sense is all about on how to speak in a way people can understand as well. But not just so strictly how to speak, but also how to support our communication in a way. Our main questions in the projects are or were at the beginning of the project. What kind of support do people need when they speak with each other? So what is good to know if we are, especially if we are professionals working in a environment where uh, people have all different sort of sort of uh, communication needs, how can we support the professionals and how can we support the people who are engaging in this communication? Who are listening to the, when we speak today about audiobooks, who are listening to different things, who are engaging in the direct communication, the beneficiaries of spoken easy language, people who need accessible language. Another question was, uh, and it's based, of course, on this first question, which guidelines for this spoken easy language would really work? Which guidelines, which recommendations can we suggest to people? So what does work? Uh, what can you use? What can you think about when you're trying to, for example, teach someone something? 
or when you are trying to communicate news on the radio, or when you are in, a, for, for example, in a, a situation like a therapist, how, how can we take these guidelines and how can we use them and which are the ones that really work? And then, of course, the other question, the last question, how can we present these guidelines in an accessible way so that the people will be able to find them, to understand them, and eventually use them, we would say, implement them in their communication. So these were all of the things that we were coming from. We said, let's make a plan, let's try to answer those questions, and let's try to get the support from the people who know the best, and those are the, of course, the end users of accessible language, and also the professionals who use language, who use also accessible language in their day-to-day -day work. The project CELSI is uh, primarily in the field of adult education. So uh, here we go hand in hand with uh, like pedagogues from folk, uh, folk, folk school and so on. Sorry, my Swedish is not the best. It's non-existent actually, <laughs> but I'm trying with some words. Um, it's primarily meant for adult education. So for the people who are already finished with their schooling or possibly don't have a lot of schooling behind them, but uh, but they engage in some sort of lifelong learning, but it also applies to all different settings. We already mentioned radio, broadcasters, we mentioned therapy settings. Uh, so these uh, situations can be pretty different. Sometimes we would like, for example, we have today Ula Boman here from Sweden who works with politicians a lot. Sometimes we would like that our politicians would be the ones to think about this and give us easy information, clear information, or lawyers, for example, or uh, public administration when they speak with us. So what are we doing right now in the project? The project is made from different parts. It's like a puzzle. And we call these pieces of the puzzle work packages. One thing we have, and I won't bore you with this, is project management. This goes on all the time. We have to coordinate things, we have to talk about things, we have to write things down, down and so on. The other big part of the project is already done. This is needs and resource mapping. It has a big name, but actually this was a research that was led by our colleagues from the University of Trieste and now University of Calvia, and at this time Pierre are here today with us in the front row. Um, we asked what I said earlier, we asked the professionals, we asked the end users, we asked the researchers, what does work for you? What are your strategies that you are using when you are communicating with your communication partners or whatever we would like to call them? And we got a lot of answers from a lot of different countries. And if you are interested in these uh, numbers, you can go to our CELSI website. It has a very easy uh, address. It's uh, celsi.eu. And you can see all those numbers there. Uh, but what is important here um, for uh, our discussion right now is that this was a base, like a starting point, or like this uh, important first step for us to try and do the recommendations and strategies for spoken easy language. So we learned from this. We also went through a lot of books because you saw you have universities uh, in the project and they led us through this. And uh, we started to build these recommendations, and this is led by our colleagues in the last row. Uh, they are also here with us today, and I think Laura will present uh, uh, about it later, and Agnes is also here. And this is mostly done. We are still waiting to get this last confirmation, because another thing that we did in this project was pilot testing. We were not able to test everything, that we recommend in the recommendations. Some things are already, uh, were already tested before, or they are super obvious. So what we did in Latvia and Sweden, in Slovenia, we chose different recommendations 
And then we tested them with our end users of accessible language. And these were, this, this was a variety of people. People uh, with different uh, obstacles, not to speak about diagnosis, but this was a very important and uh, a super enriching experience for all of us that were uh, uh, that were involved. And we will speak about this also today, later in the day. Um, and we will tell you what we learned from this. And now that we are working on the report, that we are getting all of these results from the three countries together, we will be able to finish the recommendations because we will see, aha, we tested this and it worked greatly. So we will put the stamp on there. This was Celsius tested, this for sure works. This perhaps didn't turn out so well and should we leave this in the recommendations or we need more research on this? So this is how it works in this project. And another exciting thing, the last puzzle of the project is already going on and we are now trying to make this last piece. How to make those recommendations uh, exciting <laughs> or uh, attractive for people to use them? How can they use them uh, easily? So this will be done online. We will put the recommendations online. We will make, uh, this was a secret up to up till now, but we will make different videos with different situations. And I'm not telling the details, but RTV Slovenia is leading this. And of course, uh, Veronica and Andrea are also here with us today. And uh, by the end of the project, you will be able to go online and see all of those recommendations. And as I mentioned earlier, um, we will especially mark those that were Celsius tested. So like a certificate of recognition from our uh, cooperation groups or end users. Um, and this will be presented at the conference in Ljubljana. If you have a chance to come on the October 17th, you are warmly welcome. And we are already planning that. And we will be testing uh, the those, uh, not testing, but uh, yes, in a way, testing the tool, so, uh, exploring the tool in Ljubljana, also online. So you are already welcome to think about uh, this uh, in October. What else to say about this? Um, we are here. This is a complicated scheme, uh, and I won't go into details, but this is how our timeline looks like. And if you see this guy up there, he's on a scooter, not how do you say this, Kiro, and he's driving and, uh, in a way uh, to get to reach to the end of the project. As you can see, uh, we had many events like this. Okay, not many, but a few. Uh, for the first time, we met in Vilnius, and then we have a conference like this in Trieste, and it was great. And then we had a conference in Riga in October last year, and now we are in Stockholm, just right with this guy on the timeline. Of oh, Stockholm, I'm so sorry. I just wrote this <laughs> because this stayed in from the application, and I deeply apologize for the fall uh, to the fall model. <laughs> we are okay. <laughs> Sometimes I, we were just speaking with the colleagues earlier. Sometimes it just gets the blur when we are running around so much. So Malmo, I will change this right after I get my seat there. Um, and this is it. All I am obliged to say at the end is that this is fund, funded, of course, by the European Commission. And once again, it's targeted towards adult education. But we are very sure that these results, the guidelines, will be used by many other professionals and also the people who need accessible language will be able to go uh, and use this tool and also understand the things that are explained in the tool. CELSI, spoken easy language for social inclusion. Partners are Zavo Trisa, RTV Slovenia, Dyslexie Verbundet, Università degli Studi di Pavia, Vieglas Valodas Agentura, Vilnius Universitetas, Vsi Informatio Scaupimo Irsklaidos Centras. Funded by the European Union.